Hello and welcome to another episode of the Puzzle of Love podcast. I am your host, your sucker for love host, because I'm a hopeless romantic, Dante, here with the gorgeous Elena. And we have another fantastic couple uh, to introduce. We have Dre and Shamir uh, dialed in from California. You guys say hi to the Puzzle of Love listener. Hey! (laughs) Right on. on. Um, Thank you guys so much. Um, People have uh, heard me say this, but I will say it again if you are a first time listener Puzzle of Love, every uh, relationship is different. Some relationships uh, may be a crossword puzzle. Others might be jigsaw. Some might even be a Rubik's cube. But this is a platform for us to discuss with couples some of the little pieces of their puzzle that sort of makes everything work uh, together. We might not necessarily dive into every single jigsaw piece if if Dre and Shamir happen to be that. I'll let them decide what type of puzzle they are. But um, the best way uh, to start to learn a little bit about their journey is learning about their origin story. So uh, we don't have a nifty title for this game yet. I've called it the two minute drill for quite a few episodes. So I think that'll stick, but um, we give you guys each one minute to tell your origin story. Uh, One of you will start the story and wherever that minute drops off, the other will pick up where the first uh, dropped off. And Shamir, off camera, you won the little game to dictate who who goes first or second. So, Shamir, are you going to start the story, or is that is that Andre's shoulder? You can go, babe. Andre. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love it. Um, so, Dre, you get uh, you get the first minute. Uh, you both get one minute to tell the story, however you so choose. So, the rules of the game are that the other cannot interrupt whoever is speaking so dre you can say whatever you want you can't interrupt um but again shamir you get a minute as well so you can say whatever you want and the reason for that is because everyone's perception on how the origin story went might might be a little different um other than that there are no real rules you're telling your story so uh kalina i'll i'll count us down and you'll start the timer and um kalina will let us know when the minute's up three two one. All right. So me and her, we both met um, in church. So we were both going to a church called Manifest of Glory. Um, and I was singing there and I, I didn't know she even went there at all. <laughs> at all. We was, um, I was actually introduced to a mutual friend named Michelle. Michelle introduced us and I was like, oh, I didn't even know she even was here <laughs> or whatnot. But she introduced us. Um, we started talking. Um, and from that talk you know that we did it was like a, I think like a six to eight hour talk we were just in the car just talking about everything you know everything life everything from people everything that you can even think of I mean we were just talking just talking and then from that talk it just seemed like that hit it off but basically we were introduced um to each other and that's <laughs> how it went how far I'm in, but <laughs> quick and short. <laughs> nice and quick and short. You left some time on the clock. All right, Shamir, go ahead. Pick up where you left off. Okay, so um, yeah, so we did meet through church, and um, so Michelle told she was she also does hair, and so she was like, "Oh, I have this person to introduce you," and I was just like, "Okay, well, I guess." And so um, she introduced me to Dre and um, like he was saying, from there we were talking. So I knew that he was my husband before any of that, after we were talking. Um, And I I went home and I called Michelle. I was like, that's my husband. Oh gosh. (laughs) And then after that, like we were inseparable. Like we always talked, we always, like I I lived like 30 minutes from him, but we would just be in the car talking, like you said, like, all the time and literally like we would be in the car from like the time we got off to like maybe one or two in the morning just talking although we had to get up to go to work the next day just in the car talking um but yeah it was it was wow great great friends from the start so (laughs) that's how it started (laughs) okay so uh i'll try to recap this one um dre you're singing in church Uh, Mm um shamir is there you you don't know that uh, until it's brought to your attention. You guys 
are uh, sort of someone's playing matchmaker. Shout out to Michelle. And um, <laughs> you guys decide that honey dripping over the phone is not good enough. We're going to do this live, <laughs> <laughs> live and direct right here in the car. <laughs> Parking lot pimping, <laughs> if you will, um, and uh, completely disregarded any sleep schedules because of it. Um, but it sounds like there's a lot that has transpired between those uh, those 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 honey drips in the car to today. Um, so I want to kind of jump into that 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 fill in the blank, so to speak. Um, and you kind of touched on something, Shamir, that was also. Um, Part of your answers in the pre-screener um, in regards to you knew that was your husband um so i want to kind of pick your brain a little bit how did you how did you know what was it that said it's that's him <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> so when he first started talking i was like my heart was just it just felt something different from when i was dating anybody else i was like this is strange and so at, when he just started talking and then after I left I just the whole vibe was just it was just well and I was like oh my goodness <laughs> I was like I never felt like this before and so I was like this is what they say when you're, you're like oh you're in love like you just talked to him what do you mean <laughs> so yeah that's how <laughs> and so so Dre was that a, a, a mutual feeling were you like this is my wife <laughs> off of day one or Let's talk about it. You know, so let's have a couple more sessions of talking and see where it goes. And, you know, so that's where I was. <laughs> right on. So, Shamir, did you share that with him? I don't even remember that part. I know I told Michelle. I was like, oh okay. my goodness. I didn't know. So no, okay. okay. <laughs> now, Dre, you did say for your first impression of Shamir is that she was ride or die. So, what about? Shamir just gave you that vibe of like she's gonna be like the meme says I'm gonna stick by him that's my man I'm gonna stick by him what what about Shamir gave you that vibe it was just through all the conversations like she always wanted to be there for me always wanted to you know offer like can I do this for you can I do that I'll do this you know so she just always just like implied herself to like help out on anything that was going on that I'm doing or to help me fix or solve any problem that I was doing. Like she wanted to be there to solve it. So that just lets me know that, you know, she was there. Yeah. She wasn't gonna just sit there and watch you watch you go through something. She wanted to kind of roll up her sleeves a little bit right. and get, get her own hands dirty. I love it, <laughs> love it. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's a element that we've heard more than once thus far in terms of this instantaneous like off the first meeting, first impression, I know that he's the one or she's the one, um, which is completely adverse to how we met or what we felt when we met. Like, if you would have asked me the day I met her or told me the day I met her that that's your wife, I probably would have fought you. Like, what? You're not going to tell me that that's my wife? No, <laughs> I just met her and she's cool, but whoa, like, let's slow down. And it was a mutual feeling. Like, if you would have told Kalina at the first meeting, she wouldn't have believed it either. So um, let's kind of talk about that development because like Dre said, let's let's have a few conversations first before we <laughs> before we just go in here and start making claims. Um, let's talk, let's kind of talk, <laughs> let's kind of talk about that development. Um, and I call it the pre post I do, right? Like Dre and Shamir pre and Dre and Shamir post saying I do, I'm I'm sure is a different element. So can you kind of talk through your transition of honey dripping in the car to all right now we're engaged and married and and where we kind of are today well, well from the beginning of you're talking about from like when they engaged or the before part or after engaging yeah or just, just just yeah either either or or both because okay. i have to assume that they're not necessarily the same yeah so basically in the beginning i'm, I'm we're talking but i'm asking all these questions kind of like and at this time, we're older. So, you know, like when you're in your 30s, you're kind of like, okay, well, I don't have time for really dating. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let me just ask all the questions to see, will this person fit, you know what I'm saying, as the person I will want to marry, you know what I'm saying? So you're asking all these questions leading on to that. And after asking all those questions and, you know what I'm saying, the company that you have and you're having good times and you laugh at, she laughs at your jokes and she likes your jokes and stuff like that, you know, so it kind of just 
you kind of get that feeling. So once you get kind of get that feeling like, okay, well, I can see myself with her forever. So then it kind of kind of led into that. And then after the engagement, you're just kind of just prepping for this togetherness, you know, so mm-hmm. of how it looks like. Well, in my eyes. <laughs> so for, let me see. So for, yeah, he said, ask them questions. Okay, like it was a drill sergeant type. I was like, he is asking so many questions. Like, why are you asking me? Christman. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, and then I didn't think nothing of it because I'm just all like, okay, let's just roll, you know, let's just roll with it. Let's just keep on. But oh my goodness, I don't think I ever heard that many questions, you guys. <laughs> you just feel like Kane and Menace to Society. So you bought I, the beer <laughs> at 11 50. Kind of like that. Like literally, it was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. And it, it was different because when we were dating our personalities are so different like I think I put that in my um the questionnaire too we are so different and I didn't even think nothing of it because you're kind of you're still in this oh this oh butterflies and whatever you know but after like the engagement and everything I was just like uh uh because we are just so different but it makes it work because um we're so different you know and it's it's literally like people say like um opposites attract and that's literally what it was for us and I didn't I never thought that that would be a thing but it is <laughs> so what so, are some of the ways that you're different um so what do you think what would you say I I mean I literally it's almost it's almost everything <laughs> <laughs> literally but it just makes it work literally like I'm a person who likes to dress I like shoes I like <laughs> fashion like everything and she didn't care that much you know what I'm saying so I mean that's what made us different I mean but she was open you know what I'm saying so that's that's what made it cool Mm -hmm. so she was open to like oh what do you think about this would you wear this would you do that you know and everything so her being open to it was cool but I mean about fashion and clothes she doesn't really care you know what I'm saying but (laughs) but she's her being open was cool yeah yeah and I'm I'm all like um he what do you want? Because I, I don't like to be like, oh, hey, look at me. You know, some people, like he said, he likes the fashion. He likes that. And that, that brings more attention. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm all like, I don't need to have, you know, I'm behind the scenes type thing. Like I can make everything happen behind the scenes, but I don't need to be like, I just did that, you know? Yeah. And so fashion to me brought uh, a sense of, hey, look at me, you guys. Look what I got on, you know? I don't know. Right. <laughs> so that's kind of be, that's where the difference can be, you know? Um, but it's kind of like the oil and water like it didn't mix but then when you mix it together everything everything worked out because now I'm all like okay I, I like that mm-hmm. <laughs> you know so, it's yeah. funny it's it's funny that you guys point that out like the fashion tip because I would have guessed uh, just as an outsider looking looking at you two I would have guessed that was something that was common for you because Shamir you never not looking put together in my opinion with, Thank you. with which, and I know me and Dre have similarities and and his <laughs> his his handle on Instagram is trendsetter so I know right. fashion. <laughs> shout out to trendsetter 206 follow him if you haven't um <laughs> you know shoe game tight got it you know everything's gonna match that's been, that's been Dre since for as long as I can remember and and I have no qualms about it okay my hat right now and my shirt <laughs> you know, um but the fact that you 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 mentioned like that wasn't necessarily anything that was a deal breaker for you like that that's shocking to me just as yeah. as I'm just selfishly talking about me right now and how yeah. I saw you too I was like oh I feel I could have swore they were you know giving each other fashion consulting tips the way they could be coming through um, <laughs> so with yeah. that what are some of the because you guys aren't completely different right what are some some of those commonalities that you guys find between the two of you I feel like it grew um as we got married because we were like for literally guys like for a while it was we were so opposite like I it was only for real by the grace of God like that marriage continued because we had to have God in it because we were so different and it was like why did we get married like oh my goodness but it was so strange because in the dating process it still worked you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. but I feel like after the engagement well this is what you know obviously me thinking but it just it went you know it went different and so it, it gradually came to becoming 
uh, you know what I'm saying, to becoming the dope together. You know, everything was mixing together. Um, and so that's 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 how it went. It just it, by the grace of God, every year by year, it has gotten better and better and better. Um, would because I feel though, like no, would you say that during your dating that you didn't really see the difference or like how because you're dating so you're getting to know someone right so did you just not kind of see it or you like until after you <laughs> I, married? I mean obviously when you get married it's totally different like you're living in the same household like it's mm -hmm. everything becomes one and mm -hmm. so obviously you see more but when you're dating someone I mean you have to have seen some of it you know what I mean like, how, like right you know. Um, a little bit of it, but then in my, in my, cause I'm like, oh, this crazy faith. I'm like, oh, okay, it's okay, it's gonna change because yeah. you know, faith, faith happens and yeah. faith changes things, and this is coming my God husband. So, together, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, so it was like I didn't think nothing of it, like no other, you know, things like that. So yeah, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so uh, how about you, Dre? Did you any, anything um, on that? Did you see any of the differences or were there any, I won't call them red flags, but maybe some <laughs> yellow flags, some caution. <laughs> right. I, don't, I don't see it being wrong or anything wrong yeah. with being no. different. You know. Not at all. Not, right. not at all. Not at all. But there are, you know, in that dating process, it's especially with Dre and his interrogation, that's what you called it, Shamir. I'm not saying, you know, it was no, wrong, no. He, had a, he, he had his questions, right? Mm -hmm. Um you know, you're, you're making your, you know, you're making your list and you're checking it twice. Right. So mm -hmm. was there anything where it was like, Hmm, maybe not necessarily a deal breaker, but sort of like, again, that yellow flag head scratcher, like, okay, let me think about this for a second. With me, I more so like with the asking questions, I want to hear her opinion on what she thought about a lot of things. So that let me know like where the difference is. Cause I know how I'm thinking, but I just want to see how she's thinking about a certain thing. And so with the opinions and whatnot, uh, I mean, I already, I don't know, with, in Christ, with me, I see a lot of stuff that a lot of people can't see. So I already seen a lot of things for her, you know, but I still wanted to get her opinion on how she thought. And then so like, even with dressing, like she doesn't care about how to dress, but I already foreseen that we're going to get past that. And then so, but I just want to know her opinion to know how much work we're gonna, it's gonna take to get past that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we did have a lot of, a lot of things, but I mean, a lot of differences, but it was just, to me, it's just opinion. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know, you feel this way about that, but like you don't like tomatoes and something, but after right. eating them a lot, you don't know say you get used to it all, they're not that bad, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So that's how I seen the differences. To me, there were there, but I just figured there was nothing like strong enough where it was a deal breaker. The only thing that would have been a deal breaker with me if she didn't go to church, but we met in exactly. church. So, yeah. so everything beyond that, I, I felt like it was, you can get around it and we can get to a resolution or, or at least to a common ground. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> well, I think now would be a good time to take just a quick break. Um, probably because if you're like me, you probably feel like you're underdressed being in the presence of Dre and Shamir with all this fashion <laughs> talk. So you might want to change your clothes. Um, so while this music plays and Dre, you pick this song uh, that we'll go into, which is one of my favorites. Uh, and again, I'm a hopeless romantic. So R&B is sort of my thing. Like I love uh, R&B music, but this one is really good. Uh, it's Jagged Edge, I Gotta Be. So uh, we'll take a little listen to that and then come back on the other side. Okay.
Okay, so you guys talked about um, foster. So can you walk us through that process and, and what made you decide to foster, um, how the process was, um, fostering, if you're still fostering? Oh, okay. Um, so when we were, well, before, for me, um, I always was like, oh, I don't know if I want to have my own children or, um, but then there's so many children that need help, you know? Um, so I don't know if, should I adopt? Should I foster? Should I have my own kids? So it was the, you know, you're thinking, you know, about parenting in general. And so I've always known that I wanted to do something to help, help out. Um, and so I've already, that was always been in my mind. So since and then when I met him, he, he, asked, when I met Gray, he asked me, he was like, what do you think about foster care? Fostering? I was like, did we talk about this before? And one of the many questions he asked, <laughs> but, but we hadn't. And so I was another reason why I was, when we were dating, I was like, oh, okay, see, this is my husband because nobody asked that question or nobody, you know, a lot of people don't think about fostering or whatever. Cause it's a, it's a, um, an unselfish act, you know, to take right. in other people's children. Um, so that's how. I thought about it from before it was always on my heart to do that and then um uh so then when I met him like I said well you know as we were dating we were thinking about it and we went through the process of you know um being established foster parents <clears throat> so yeah so that was something that we always thought with me it was something that was always, always on my heart like I always wanted to help out or look out for the kids in the neighborhood. So then that was just the automatic thing that, you know, I wanted to do, but before going forward, you're going to have to see if your partner wants to do that too. If not, then it's not going to work. But I've always had a goal to where, I mean, still do, where I want to open up like a 24 hour community center for youth or, you know, places to go. Cause there's so much that happens in the homes with youth and everything like that. So just somewhere for them to go, just to kind of get away and kind of get the, uh, counseling and everything that they need to kind of get themselves together, uh, family counseling, basically, like with them and then their parent or whatnot, or whoever is their guardian to try to get stuff together. But I always have that in my heart to do. So that's where fostering kind of came in with me. Uh, as of right now, though, we're not doing it right now. It's kind of like our license is on pause since we came out of California, but it's still there. But I mean, we're still able to do it uh, down here. But right now, we just kind of have it on pause, just kind of figuring out what we're doing while we're down here in California. Yeah. <clears throat> that's a that's an excellent transition to um, a similar but completely different topic because you guys are originally from here, from Washington, and now, uh, you know, relocated. And we've had a couple of conversations already with with uh, couples who have who have crossed that, you know, that that leap of faith. I can't speak for Felina, but for me, it petrifies me to think about moving outside of my home state where I've grown up my entire life, but talk about um, sort of that transition and um, some, you know, what, what it takes to actually get to a point where you land on a destination. This is where we want to move and then carrying out the, the plan to do that and fulfilling. Yeah. So it was, I mean, cause yeah, of course, where you from um, Washington and it was a, a big decision, you know, but first it was for us, it was just a thought. And we were like, okay, well, let's just see, you know, if this is something that we want to do because our most of our family is in Washington and our friends and, you know, our, our life is up there. And so we were like, okay, well, let's just see, you know. Um, but then, uh, and we, again, that faith, that crazy faith, we were like, okay, then, I mean, God is never going to fail us. So let's just see what we're going to, what we're going to do. So that's what made us. And then I, for me personally, I needed a change. And I was like, I am tired of the same, like, you know, same thing. So let's just, we don't have any extra, like we don't have to think about, oh, we have to get the kids and let's do this. We don't have to do, you know, and everybody has their own lives. And so our families and our friends were, you know, doing their own things, which everybody always does anyways. So that was, it made it easier for us to be like, okay, well, let's just try. And I was um, talking to Dre and I was like, babe, I think I need to change. And, and then he was like, well, I've always wanted to live in um, California. And so I was like, okay, well, let's go. <laughs> So it was really like a, <clears throat> a spontaneous type thing. It wasn't like this long planned out. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> it wasn't long planned out, but it was planned out. I mean, well, for him, because he's a yes. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything if it's not planned <laughs> right, out. It, right. it doesn't have like a goal or anything to it. Like I wouldn't, I, yeah. I wouldn't have even thought about it. So it was more so like, 
let's try it out for a month and see, you know what I'm saying? And right. if it doesn't, doesn't work, house is still there to come back to and life, everything is still there in track, but it was just kind of like, let's just try it out and see. Month went by, okay, we like it. Sunny every day, it's cool, you know? So then we just kept going with it and we never came back, you right. know? Yeah. Not meaning like we never meant to really like stay, like with me, like I only brought like a month worth of clothes, you know, <laughs> and shoes and everything. So like, I didn't plan on <laughs> leaving at all. I still got a storage full of shoes in Washington. So I mean, I'm, I don't know how I'm gonna get all that here. But, but yeah, but I, I never meant for it to be like a, a full on thing. Mm -hmm. just more of try it out but after we're down here I, I actually don't see myself going back now, so. right and see and that's that opposite type thing I'm like okay let's go let's don't worry about it we'll worry about it later right. you know what I'm saying right. so there's the opposite he's all like let's plan it out I mean I'm a planner but some things I'm like no oh, let's just do you know so that's the opposite thing but it worked out well because we both know we needed something different yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm interested in this storage that is still up there. <laughs> kind of like the I mean, I'll manage it for you. I think we were the same size. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, no, that's great. Um, and and you, you touched on something, Shamir, that I, I thought was really compelling, which is you recognize the, the ease of making that transition because of what you don't currently have or what, you, what a lot of couples have, which is, you know, we got three of them running around right now. Right. right. Like that makes that decision that much more complicated when you think about the, the lives of those you're, you know, you're um, fostering or, or, or rearing. You guys mm -hmm. didn't necessarily have a foster child at the time that you were having this discussion, I would presume. And then, as you mentioned, like you have family out here, but they're off doing their own thing. Like we're all adults, like they'll be all right. Mm -hmm. um, right. So let's let's try it. Um, maybe that's what I need to get my head wrapped around. <laughs> Not that we're looking to move out of state, but it's, right. it's been talked about. If you ask our eldest son, we should already be in Southern California to <laughs> See, help him. That's what's up. You know, <laughs> to help him pursue his uh, career in acting. But nah, this is where I was born and raised. I'm too right. sick to the death of me. You're like, no. Mm -hmm. I understand it rains here a lot. A whole lot. <laughs> yeah. I, I get it. I do that's miss that. That's been my reality my whole life. It's yeah. not something I can complain about. And LA is right. just a two and a half hour flight. Come on, man. Let's, let's yeah. just book it and go. I think it's it's funny because, um, you know, we both are from here. We both grew up here. Um, I, when I was like 12, I lived in California for like six months um, and then came, came back. But other than that, I've lived here. And so mm -hmm. I have always been like, I want to stay here. I don't want to move nowhere else. I don't want to go nowhere else. And because of our, our eldest child wanting to pursue acting and stuff, we I have thought about it. I've I've just like I'm like I can probably try, it, you know. Even though my whole life I've always been like, mm -mm, nope, I'm not going nowhere. I think that I definitely can try it just to see, you know, um, just take that leap of faith and say, you know, if it doesn't work, we can always come back. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't. Yeah, I was not going anywhere. <laughs> and right. So and so just <laughs> trying it out and. And, and the plus side is that, you know, we would be, you know, closer to um, where he, you know, could, could really flourish. And mm -hmm. so that would be my main goal. But then also that it's, it's, it's nice and sunny and hot. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it was really 75 is. and sunny today. I and know. I'm all like, yeah, this is supposed to be winter. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we were probably in the, in the low 40s. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't know what it was. I was in the house all day. I'm not going. To um, no, yeah, and LA is like second home. Like we love going to LA. Yeah, we do. Uh, mm -hmm. So if if we did take that leap of you know packing up and leaving, mm -hmm. it would it would certainly be uh, LA for reasons that she just mentioned. And Dre, you touched on a little nugget um, in regards to some of that planning or or you know the wheels turning in your mind. Like, hey, you know, the house is here, so if we need to come back you know, we can, that kind of mm -hmm. speaks to, um, you know, some of the liberties that you afford yourself when you own a home versus, you know, breaking a lease, renting, things of that mm -hmm. nature, sort of that, you know, right. that generational wealth that we, as in Black folk, aren't necessarily 100%, uh, you know, privy to, right? We, we don't know right. what that life uh, looks like. So kind of talk about that, because I know that you both, um, again, in your pre-screener talked about um, some of your goals as a couple is, you know, kind of expanding your territory from, you know, literal, 
a literal sense of you know owning more property and things of that nature so talk a little bit about that importance and you know how you've maneuvered um since then and i mean you don't have to like give us your whole financial portfolio or anything but i'd love to learn a little bit more about your strategies because you know there's certainly uh, an opportunity to learn from one another for sure mm -hmm. yeah okay uh, so right now i mean yeah so we i myself and we 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 want to own like you know more just property just in general i mean even if it's just to help out people or whatnot you know like you know if family need a house or something like that or a place to stay but as of right now our house in um washington we have it up for airbnb so it's still um it's still able so if we want to go back anytime we just block out the time or what that or whatnot but I feel like it's, I mean, it's important like to own property. I feel like it's important just to have goals, you know what I'm saying? To kind of just push on that and reach on that. You know what I'm saying? If you have two people with the same mindset of reaching those goals, they're all achievable. Any goal is achievable, I feel like. So I feel like just getting at that and just just doing it. But yeah, owning property is one thing I wanted to do. I want to own it down here. And then I kind of want to own in Florida too, but just, I feel like <laughs> <laughs> that's new. <laughs> yeah. so I, I mean, I, I feel like that's important because I, I feel like I mean it's, it's it's important too to be happy and you know with, in a relationship, but I mean not just living just to live. I mean getting something out of you know living. You know what I'm saying? Not just be doing stuff just to do. Mm -hmm. You know, with no goals. I feel like doing stuff just to be doing it with no goals is pointless. I feel like you're just living just to live. You're just not even a name. You're just a number at this point. You know. So mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I feel like um, uh, for for me, like it owning more, like he was saying, um, to to help out. You know what I'm saying? Um, so like if somebody up, you know, Washington's like, oh, I mean, you know, hard times because you know it was COVID, it was whatever it was, but being um stable enough to have to help out, I think that's our underlying goal was basically to like to help out. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then you know to have that, like you were saying the 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 generation of the wealth so it's like you have this and you have that because when we were younger I, I didn't you know my dad he had you know he owned a home and stuff like that but it was just just to do something different you know what I'm saying and not have that stigma of oh well this person can't do that you know but then change the narrative for somebody else I'm like yeah we're young and we can do that you know um and then just take that again here's the faith that take that leap of faith even if you're um scared to do it you know you just gotta you just gotta do it <laughs> um so yeah <clears throat> and um something that i mean the word that 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 jumps out in regards to what you guys both talked about is goals which i don't know if you guys even shared your responses to the pre-screener with one another um thus far mm -hmm. no couples have done that so um, no we didn't no. Yeah. i'm all asking him he's all like hey. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine that's fine okay. i appreciate that you guys kept it a secret because we're gonna dive into some of these answers uh, right okay. now um, and I want to get your response Dre I'm going to read Shamir's answers uh, to the top attribute question if you recall there are several different attributes that sort of make a gumbo mix of a healthy strong relationship all of those are in my opinion very important attributes but maybe we don't stack rank them the same you might have a top three that differs from another and so I want to get Dre's initial response to what Shamir put as her top three attributes of love. Um, Shamir, you put quality time, humor, and goals. There's that word. Dre, does anything that I just said uh, stand out as a, well, yeah, of course, that's Shamir, or does anything shock you? No, that's, that's just, that seems like her. I mean, it seemed like everything she was saying, like the quality time. I mean, because, I mean, to this day, we started out, you know, well, from the beginning, we used to always talk a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like in the car for hours, we still talk for hours. So we still do that. So, right. I mean, so the quality time is, is there, is key. I know that would be on her list. And the goals, I feel like if you don't have a goal together, you guys, if you, if you don't have goals together, then you have goals separately. If you have goals separately, then you're not, one you know what i'm saying like you're two different minds trying to be one and you're not and i feel like if you don't have goals together you're not one there's no point in even being married you might as well just be dating one another for hella long because otherwise there's no point you know what i'm saying you're just right. two people always going to get in an argument every two weeks because you think differently you know right. two different right. goals. So i feel like 
don't get married. <laughs> just be friends. You see how yeah. Jay even he even planned the argument every two weeks. We don't argue. <laughs> <laughs> he <plans> everything. <laughs> That's it for dating. <laughs> 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 and babe, you want to uh, reveal Dre's attributes to Shamir? Yeah. So Dre, you had loyalty, trust, and goals. Okay. So is that okay. That that sounds like him. Yeah, he got. You have to be loyal. Like if if the trust is broken, so loyalty and trust. If it if that is broken, then it's it's kind of like no coming <laughs> no coming back. You know what I'm saying? And it you wouldn't think that because he's quiet or you know what I'm saying but it's a, it's a big thing for him you know what I'm saying and like we were just saying today it there's not a lot of stuff that bothers him but when something bothers him it bothers him because he's he's pretty chill you know yeah. and I'm the here we go the opposite thing I'm all like this is bothering me like oh my goodness and I'm the oh <laughs> but it, it doesn't it doesn't surprise me it doesn't at all nope <laughs> so get Again, I, I hate to pry, but it's kind of the point, right? So when we talk about loyalty, uh, I'm going to toss out this example. You just tell me if this fits the bill of loyalty in, in, in your guys' eyes. So let's, Dre, just for sake of argument, you're, you know, you want to watch Insecure. You want to get into it, um, the show, the Insecure. And you maybe not have articulated this to Shamir just yet, but Shamir brings up the fact that um, she's, into it or she starts watching it and you say hey i wanted to uh, watch that with you or you articulate like hey i'm interested in too do you feel like she's being disloyal if she continues to watch insecure without you um <laughs> or do you guys even care about that do you guys have the you better watch this show with me or else is that stigma in the I, if it's a common show <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. If it's a common show <laughs> Uh -huh. if if, if, I feel like if she can't wait or whatnot, then go ahead and do it. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like if it's a common show, though, though we do like power. Like, yeah, she's not. <laughs> none of us are gonna watch it <laughs> unless we're watching that together. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was, I was using that question to throw a little bit of. So I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out how to act. <laughs> No. <laughs> you haven't forgiven the situation. I don't no, know. it's not that I haven't forgiven. <laughs> I just wanted to throw it out there as a hypothetical. So let's tell the whole story because I started watching Insecure and I had made mention about Insecure. Mm -hmm. that I, this is a show that I got into. Um, and then he said, oh, yeah, I've seen that. I was thinking about maybe we'll start watch, you know, wanting to watch that. But I was already knee deep in the show. Like it wasn't like I had watched like one or two episodes. Mm -hmm. So he would have had to play catch up. Like a whole season had went by, mm -hmm. and you know I would watch it like um, at night or something like that when he would get in the shower or something like. That. I would just put it on my phone and watch it until he gets got in the bed. It's not like I was like into it, and he's just watching me watch the show. Like that's not <laughs> so so <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so and then, so that's how. It kind of came about. So let me know when you're done. No, whatever. So, so that's how it came about. So then he's like, now, and then I was like, I don't even know if you would like the show. That was my thing. It's like I don't even know if you would like the show. Um, from the based on the shows that we, you know, were into and we watched together, I'm like, this is not something that I think you would be even interested in. So that's kind of how that. Went. <laughs> so now I'm on season five, and he still ain't start watching. <laughs> He's done at this point. Yeah, I can't catch up to that, man. I, don't, I got things to do. No, but yeah. Um, power, though? No. Yeah, there, see, yeah. No. Yes, we yeah, watched yeah, it together. That, you got that's, it. A, yeah. that's a sin. If you watch right. Power with Queen power. Sugar, we watched together. Yeah, Queen, Queen Sugar, Sugar, yes. Yeah, so, yes. You know, there's, show, there's shows that I know, okay, that, that's something that we watch together. But this mm -hmm. Insecure, I'm like, you know, you're not going to like it. In yeah. all reality, I, I, mean, let, I let her have it. I, I that that is her show. I let her have it. Um, I was I just wish she would have let me know prior to her binging the first three episodes yeah. or yeah. three seasons or whatever the case may be. Uh, no, I uh, just joking. Uh, but it's more about you know um, that loyalty thing, right? Like yeah. Yeah. you know, people talk about loyalty a lot, and it's always or I shouldn't say always, but most of the time it's tied to those big upper echelon episodes of loyalty. Like mm -hmm. you're not loyal to me because of, you know, infidelity or you're not loyal to me because of whatever. Right. Um, but something as simple as 
this is hours. This little mm-hmm. block of 60 minutes if it's power. Right, this right. Our, this is our hour. Right. Do not, do not watch that show. Don't watch that show without me. If I'm asleep, we will watch it tomorrow. <laughs> Jesus be right. a DVR, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, and I, and I I like what you said, Shamir, in regards to you know Dre's quiet, and so when things bother him, it's a thing, right? It's not, oh, you know, whatever. Like he's pretty chill most of the time. So if he does express something's bothering him, it's a it's a real thing, as opposed to someone mm-hmm. who's an extrovert, um, or not as quiet. Someone like me, where I wear my heart on my sleeve. 100 percent of the time like if something's bothering me my non-verbals will tell you something is bothering me and it might not be that important it might be that you started watching insecure <laughs> <laughs> i'm just having fun with you babe. it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. i don't think it's fine i think it is it's, it's fine catch up. i haven't watched the last episode so you can catch up oh, i'll wait okay. for you so i'm gonna watch <laughs> Five point <laughs> nine seasons to catch up. <laughs> Got it. All right. I'll devote sixty hours of my life to catch up to you. No, I'm just, uh, but yeah, that that that's wonderful. Uh, I think we'll take another quick break because we're having so much fun, and we have fun questions for you guys. So okay. um, we'll go into a little bit more music. And Shamir, you picked this song uh, again. Hi. One of my favorites. Um, it's lately by Tyrese. Yes. For those out there that may be younger who don't know, <laughs> yes, Tyrese was a singer before he did all the Fast and right. Furious. Okay. Right. Um, it, we're old enough to remember Tyrese on the back of the bus, mm-hmm. you know, right. singing about Coca Cola. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> right now, he wants to know if you've loved him lately. <laughs> we'll be back in a few. Minutes. All right, Dre, Shamir, we got some fun questions for to ask you guys. I want to pick your brain a little bit, see uh, see what you guys think about some of these fun, uh, trivial topics. So we're going to put you in a hypothetical scenario. You're going on a double date with a celebrity couple. Which celebrity couple do you pick to go on a double date with? Are we answering individually? Or- yep. Okay, I um, I say Russ and Sierra, <laughs> and I would say Beyonce and Jay Z. Beyonce and Jay Z, Russell and Sierra. What, what, what's that? What's, what's your why? Like when you say Russell and Sierra, why? When you say Jay Z and Beyonce, why? That's so funny because I was gonna say Beyonce and Jay Z at first, but I was like, no, that's everybody. <laughs> but um, I say Russell and Sierra because I like their their level up, you know what I'm saying? And their bond and <clears throat> how they have Christ in the center. Um, and it just, it just feels like love to me. <clears throat> yeah. And I just feel like we're wrestling, I mean, with um, Beyonce <laughs> and Jay-Z, they're two superstars already, you know what I'm saying? So they have everything they want. They 
done everything or can do or will do, you know what I'm saying? They did it at this point, you know what I'm saying? So I just kind of like want to pick their brains of how they live and what they do and just hang out with them. I mean, people on that status and that level of things, really. And if I could sneak in a follow-up question just because it's selfish, like what do you do on a double date with Jay-Z and Beyonce or Russell and Sierra for that matter? Like what is, you guys going to miniature golf? You guys are go-karting? Like what is the double date? Mm-hmm. that's that's kind of a hard I don't know like what the I don't know what it would be like I I guess maybe I don't know I can't I don't even know what do you think might as well just be vibing and having fun I mean you yeah. know what I'm saying I mean it just I mean you could be, kind of be anywhere you know what I'm saying I'm just gonna just be talking picking their brain and you know just I mean just interactive with them and everything but it can, we can be anywhere it don't, it don't even matter at their house <laughs> you know what I'm saying so just interactive with them that's that's all i'm looking for okay so if you had one chore you can give up for the rest of your life what would it be cooking it's not a chore it's not a chore but it's good <laughs> that's not a good chore but that's a chore that's a chore yes bye do, yeah <laughs> mine is doing laundry I just, I, can't. I, I just i don't know it's just too much it's too much it's too much to fold too much and it's just time consuming i just, I just don't want to do it <laughs> like, that's your fault Dre. Done. you have so much you have so many outfits <laughs> but when stuff isn't like you know what i'm saying like clean to go with this shoe and stuff you want it just to be ready you don't want no you know you just want everything always to be ready mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i get it i get it yeah mm-hmm. okay so we have asked every couple this question. We're we're keeping keeping score here. Uh-huh. Grits. Who? Grits. Butter. Grits. Uh huh. Oh. Grits. This, the um, I guess it's not only for breakfast, but grits. Oh. Um, butter or sugar? No, butter and sugar. I'm sorry. Butter, butter and sugar, or salt and pepper. Butter and sugar. <laughs> Salt and pepper. I don't okay, you guys are divided. <laughs> I need a sweet. So do you make grits? Mm-hmm. So you make it, so then what do you do with it? You just kind of pour, put it to the side? Yeah, because we again, there's that opposite thing. He likes a lot of different foods that I don't, and I like some stuff that he doesn't, so. <laughs> as long as there's butter in it. <laughs> Right. Yeah. You got that butter in it for sure. I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we we two are um, opposite when it comes to grits. Um, mm-hmm. I actually just made some this morning, and I put, of course, butter and and mine had a lot of um, goodness of sugar, and his was the way he likes it, which is salt and pepper. Mine had butter. <laughs> well, and, and Dre. Dre I mean, we're here. You said it has to have butter. It's like, yes, we don't yes. even need to bring butter in as an ingredient. That's <laughs> unnecessary. We know it's there. If you tell me that your grits don't have butter, I don't want your grits. Right. Um, yes, but salt and pepper. I mean, it just pairs well with your French toast. And, you know, you already, I already have the sweet, right? I got the syrup. It yeah. pairs well with the eggs. It pairs well with the, with the sausage, with the bacon. Like, if I wanted sweet, I would have just put oatmeal on the on the menu. Like I don't. Right. Need <laughs> oh my god! Stop. But it's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yes, it is. Mm. I'll let you and Shamir vibe on the sugar. <laughs> Me and Dre are over here with the with the salt and pepper. You're right. And when someone says, "Hey, shrimp and grits," ours already are closer to being prepared with well, yeah, that's a whole nother thing. When we say shrimp and grits, you guys stay over there with your sugar. Oh, no, we're vibing. <laughs> we're we're vibing with scrimps and all the spices and herbs and yeah, you stick with your would you call it goodness? It is yeah, a lot of goodness. Remember that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Diabetical. <laughs> <laughs> I mean <laughs> uh so we got another one. Um okay. You guys have to pick a concert to go to. I got three concerts for you to pick from. You got to tell me which one you're going to go to. Um, concert A is Prince, Whitney Houston, Kendrick Lamar, 
Nas, Usher, and Lauren Hill. Jeez. <clears throat> Concert B. Stevie Wonder, Jay-Z, Beyonce, J. Cole, Kanye, Rihanna. Concert C. Michael Jackson, Biggie Smalls, Drake, Mariah Carey, Janet Jackson, and Chris Brown. <laughs> I'm I'm Steve. Did you say, yeah, yeah. I'm the last one. <laughs> C. Mm-hmm. C. I think I'm gonna go with B. <laughs> you said B? Yeah. You guys are going to two different concerts. <laughs> huh? You guys are getting dressed up. Dre's going to be fresh to death from head to toe. He's going to go see Stevie, Jay-Z, Beyonce, J. Cole, Kanye, Rihanna, Shamir. She's going to be dressed to death, too. She just doesn't care about it. Uh, <laughs> She's going to see Mike, Biggie, Drake, Mariah, Janet, and Chris Brown. So what was what was the the showstopper for you? What made you pick B? Dre, and what made you pick C, Shamir? I'm um, C, because it you got the mix in there. So I got my my music. I'm like, okay, Chris Brown, we're turning up. You know what I'm saying? Michael Jackson, you got the old school, and he, you know he's cool. So you got the mix of everything, because I that's how I am. I like all kind of music, just not the hard rock. So I got everything in there. Let's just go. <laughs> what you doing, babe? I mean, I like C too, but in B, you have flawless great. So I, I mean, you have people that you just. I mean, you pay so much to go see, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Beyonce's never missed on any concert or whatnot. And Jay-Z, you just got to, if he has a concert, you got to be there, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like he hit a lot of people that shit's great that you just got to be at, you know what I'm saying? Not to knock at Chris Brown and them, but I mean, mm. you just know <laughs> this is going to be a flawless concert. Like, you're just going to, you're going to be talking about for years, you know? <laughs> I think with okay. all of these concerts, they last like 12 hours because I don't foresee <laughs> like anybody right. having like a 30 minute set, right? But right. let's talk about this this concert A that neither one of you guys necessarily picked. Um, we got Prince and Whitney. Now, I know who the headliner is, but you kind of got two headliners when you say Prince and Whitney. Right. right. The question is, who is the opening act? Because you got Kendrick, <clears throat> Nas, Usher, and Lauren Hill. Who opens the show? Oh, uh, who opens the show? I think it's Nas. Um, you said Nas. I, I think Lauren Hill will open it. You think so? Yeah, I think she will open it. I want, I want to agree with you, but she's always late. So I think like <laughs> you know, in the middle, you gotta tell her she's opening up and then, you know, you never really plan for it. Like, mm. I agree with you, <laughs> but she's always yeah, late. Right. <laughs> Usher, <and> Usher. <laughs> I mean, in Usher, like, I, I gotta get to Vegas. I, COVID needs to chill so I can feel comfortable <laughs> with going and in, in really seeing things like the fact that he's in Vegas right now killing it I saw something on Instagram with like just a snippet of his show and I was like man yeah. Usher is filthy yeah he's still he's still yeah he's still dope, yeah, he's still dope. <laughs> even at his age so who opens who opens up for your concert Dre um, again we got Stevie Jay-Z Beyonce J. Cole Kanye and Rihanna uh, J. Cole will open up for it. J. Cole opens? Yeah. That's not a bad opening. That's hard to follow. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to follow. How about you, Shamir? You got Mike, Biggie. Well, first of all, are we inconsistent that Mike is the headliner? Like, that's going to end the show, right? Michael Jackson's ending the show, right? Yeah, he's, yeah. Okay. Just one, I, I don't want to, I don't want to argue. <laughs> I don't even want to. <laughs> uh, but who opens? Is it Biggie, Drake, Mariah, Janet, or Chris Brown? Let's start with Janet, just because if you already have the, the lineup, people are seeing the lineup, and they're all like, okay, we're coming for, you know what I'm saying, these people, but what's up with Janet, you know? And she was putting out some good shows back in the day, you know? So we're going to start with her. 
hey, that's I never thought of it that way. That's mm -hmm. that's hella smart because mm -hmm. you're right. Like for me personally, I'm not missing any of these shows. Like I want to see everybody. Mm -hmm. Um but for those who are like going specifically for a particular act, like if Janet, I think Janet is more of a draw, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the other names. And so if you are going for that Janet, and not, let's, let's not make no mistakes about it. If Janet and Michael are on the same card, at some point they got to do Scream, right? Like they have to perform right. that song. They got to be, but, yeah. <laughs> right? So if Janet is first to open, you might miss, I don't think you miss Scream, but you might miss Scream if they put that in her part of the concert and not Michael's. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be at the concert extra early if I know that it's opening with Janet versus Janet. others. That's pretty smart. Mm -hmm. I never thought of that. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, thank you guys. That was fun. <laughs> You're you didn't necessarily help us uh, settle this whole grits debate. It looks like we still have the same. <laughs> <laughs> you got one more sugar i got one more grits um <laughs> at this point you guys would have already seen where the tally is we keep a tally that runs at the bottom so uh, okay. the score has already been shown but i think i think um i think salt and pepper is winning i think uh, <laughs> and at the end of the at the end of it all i don't care what the score says salt and pepper is going to win in my book so. <laughs> Uh, so Adre, Shamir, thank you guys so much for carving out the time. Um, as we shared with you off camera, we appreciate your pouring into the podcast as well as letting us kind of pick apart a little bit or you know hone in on a few of the pieces of your puzzle of love. Ooh, shameless mm -hmm. plug. Um, <laughs> if you are out there listening and haven't already, you can follow us on any one of the many. Uh, social medias we've got um, facebook twitter instagram you're probably if you're watching uh, already subscribed to us on youtube if not smash the subscribe button and hit that little bell so you get notifications <laughs> when we put out uh new content i'm trying to learn how to be a youtuber guys so <laughs> hopefully i said it right okay. smash the like button um, All right. and of course if you're streaming on any of the uh, streaming services you can find us pretty much wherever you can listen to music or podcasts so um, if you want to reach out to us our email address is also at the bottom talk to us we'll talk back uh, just, you know talk in the comments we'll talk back and um, yeah till next time with another wonderful host or excuse me another wonderful couple I am your host Dante <laughs> your second for love host with Quilina the lovely Quilina and uh, we'll let you get back to whatever it is that y'all do when you're not listening to Puzzle of Love. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs>